Welcome to the Owens Corning Toro Project Health and Safety Orientation presented by Branco Enterprises Incorporated. Health and Safety Program. Our primary objective is a health and safety culture that places employee safety as the pinnacle objective of job site success. Every day, goal one is zero injuries, zero accidents. Incident and Accident Reporting. Contractors shall report all personal injury accidents, first aids, property damage accidents, fire, spills, and near misses to the project safety manager verbally within 15 minutes and a formal written report within 24 hours of each occurrence. All incidents will be investigated. Toro site safety policy includes compliance with OSHA standards, observance of all state and local laws, adherence to Toro site policies, conformance to Toro site policies, precedence given to the more stringent law or policy, participation in the SPA, which is a safe plan of action process, participation in the SOR, which is a safety observation report process. Competent person, one who is capable of identifying existing and predictable hazards in the surroundings or working conditions which are unsanitary, hazardous, or dangerous to employees, and who has authorization to take prompt corrective measures to eliminate them. Qualified person. They must have a recognized degree, certificate, etc., or extensive experience and ability to solve the subject problems at the worksite. The following is a list of project contacts for Branco Enterprises and Owens Corning Toro Project. Hard hat labels. Upon successful completion of Owens Corning Toro Project site safety orientation, a numbered hard hat label will be issued to you personally. This identifier can only be used by the person it has been assigned to. If you lose your number or replace your hard hat, you must get a replacement label before you will be allowed to work on site. Emergency situations. In the event of an emergency, please immediately notify the superintendent or project safety manager or dial 911. This can be done for injury, fire or explosion, severe weather, civil disturbance, or bomb threat. Emergency situations. In the event of building evacuations, exit the building immediately via the identified exits. Mustering site will be outside the project trailer compound. All subcontractors must have a roll call for their employees before the all clear is given. If an evacuation of the job site is necessary, all personnel will be required to muster at the pavilion near the property entrance and remain until roll call is taken and the all clear is given. Hospital and urgent care. For an emergency, the nearest hospital is Freeman Health Center at 1102 West 32nd Street, Joplin, Missouri. For urgent care and non-emergencies, Freeman Occumed is located at 3201 McClellan Boulevard, Joplin, Missouri. Communication. Contractor and subcontractors will hold daily toolbox talks and pre-planning talks at the beginning of each shift. Contractor and subcontractor shall maintain documentation and records of all personnel attending each meeting. Contractor and subcontractor will participate in weekly project safety committee. Contractors and subcontractors will submit monthly reports to the project safety manager as outlined in the health and safety manual. Coordinate with other crafts and those working near you. Health and safety rules. Toro site intends to provide a drug-free and alcohol-free work environment for all workplace employees. The use, possession, transportation, solicitation, or sale of alcohol, drugs, or any controlled substance is strictly prohibited. All forms of tobacco, smoke and smokeless, e-cigarettes, and water vapors are prohibited on the Toro project site. Weapons are prohibited on site and in private vehicles. Horseplay causes accidents and will not be tolerated. Job site speed limit. The speed limit for all vehicles and equipment is 10 miles per hour on the job site. Vehicle safety. 
All mobile equipment must be turned off when the operator is not inside the cab and buckets, forks, etc. must be placed on ground. Seat belts must be used while operating all vehicles or equipment if so equipped. Operators should not use personal radios, cell phones, or other devices that may be a distraction while operating or driving. Operators must be properly trained and authorized or certified to operate by their company per OSHA requirements. Vehicle safety. All mobile equipment must be inspected daily. Report must be on equipment. Sound horn when traveling on site, when approaching others, and at all intersections. Cranes must have a walk-along spotter when tracking. Pedestrians must make eye contact with operator of vehicle or equipment. Maintain a safe distance from moving equipment. Toro site, camera, and cell phone policy. Use of cameras within the facilities is prohibited unless approved by plant management. Form must be completed for camera use. The use of cell phones are not permitted in the construction areas except by authorized personnel and in cases of emergency. Housekeeping. Work areas and walkways must be kept clean and clear of obstructions. Clean as you go. Walkways and exit doors must be maintained. Run cords, hoses, leads overhead. Please take the time to get them up. Supplies, materials, tools, scrap, and trash must be kept organized, stacked, or contained. Barricade tape must be removed when there is no longer a hazard. Use man doors, not overhead doors, for entering and exiting buildings. Obligation policy. No employee is under any contractual or occupational obligation to attempt any type of rescue, perform any type of first aid, CPR procedure, or firefighting efforts, or place himself, herself, in harm's way for any reason. Anyone who makes such an attempt is doing so on his or her own accord as a good Samaritan and will be applauded. First Aid Toro Project strives to provide safety equipment necessary to create working conditions that will promote a safe and accident-free workplace. First Aid kits are available at the Project Safety Manager office. All items used from first aid kit must be logged. No employee is under any occupational obligation to render first aid to another person or employee. Chemical approval and disposal. Chemicals are not to be brought on site without prior written approval and must have a proper SDS or MSDS sheet. Trailers and vehicles may be inspected for chemicals before being brought on site by the project safety manager and must be approved by Toro Environmental and Safety Lead. Chemicals and hazardous materials are not to be disposed of in trash containers or in drains. All generated waste must be separated and collected in designated containers, drums, barrels with appropriate waste labels. Workplace harassment. Site policy states, our intent is to maintain a workplace free from insult, intimidation, or harassment due to race, color, religion, sex, age, or national origin. See manual for full policy and disciplinary action. Government inspections. If a government compliance officer wishes to conduct a safety inspection of the contractor's personnel and equipment or any of its subcontractor's personnel and equipment, site personnel shall immediately notify the project superintendent and obtain his approval before permitting the inspection to begin. Media and the job site. Toro site policy states that all employees refrain from conversation with the media. Toro project management will appoint a representative to engage the media. Visitor policy. All visitors must sign in at the gate. Visitors must wear steel toe boots or slip-ons and comply with all PPE requirements. Shirts and jackets must be buttoned or zipped. Skirts and dresses are prohibited. No loose hair or dangling jewelry. Young children less than 18 years of age are prohibited on site without permission and supervision. Please inform Branco prior to a visit if there is anyone physically handicapped so we can make reasonable accommodations. Falls. 
Falls are the leading cause of serious injury and fatalities in the construction industry. All employees will receive training prior to utilizing any type of personal fall protection. Electrocution. All electrical work will be done by qualified and certified electricians. Extension cords will be equipped with OSHA standard three-prong plugs. Ground fault circuit interrupters, GFCIs, will be used at all times. Struck by. Be aware of moving equipment and make sure the operator knows you are in the vicinity. Be aware of overhead work. Make sure the area is barricaded. Wear appropriate personal protective equipment, PPE, at all times and additional PPE when required. Caught in, caught between. First step, address all job hazards with an SPA, safe plan of action. Watch for pinch points on equipment and material loads. Adequately bench or shore all excavations. Lock out, tag out, and lock, tag, try, de-energized, must be implemented before working on any equipment. Toral site required personal protective equipment. Hard hats. Hard hat will be worn bill forward unless wearing face shield for welding or grinding at all times on the Toral project site. No cowboy style hard hats are allowed. Safety glasses, goggles, and face shields. Safety glasses must conform to ANSI Z87 Plus with permanent top and side shields. Photo gray or photochromic lenses will not be permitted for employees that work inside buildings and must travel in and out of buildings. Clear, amber, or indoor, outdoor designated safety glasses only are required inside buildings. Some situations may require a combination of safety glasses with goggles or goggles and or safety glasses with face shields. This includes all types of abrasive cutting with quickie saw, grinder, etc. Face shields will be the UVEX Bionic Shield Visor or equivalent with safety glasses or goggles underneath. Gloves. Appropriate work gloves will be worn at all times unless a job specific task is best performed without gloves and identified on the Safe Plan of Action or the SPA. High visibility clothing. Safety yellow, green, or orange vest or t-shirts will be worn at all times to identify contractor personnel. Faded high vis shirts are not allowed. This is waived in the event a job specific task is best performed without wearing a vest and identified on the SPA. High vis shirts will be required. Waiver must be approved by the project safety manager. Shirts. Shirts shall be worn at all times and must cover four inches below the shoulders. Tank top, sleeveless, or single strap type shirts are prohibited. When performing hot work, appropriate long sleeves must be worn. Pants. Trouser or pants legs must extend to the shoe tops. Torn or ripped clothing is not allowed. Shorts are prohibited. Shoes. Safety toe boots. Steel or composite must meet ANSI Z41 1-75 C-75 standards and be worn at all times. This includes any rubber boots worn on the job site. Metatarsal guards, which are foot shields, must be worn for any job where injury may occur to the top of the foot. For example, high pressure water blasting, jack hammering, operation of a pavement compactor, etc. When performing specific electrical work, electrical rated boots are required. Soft soled shoes, cloth shoes, running, tennis, or other street or athletic shoes or in sandals are not permitted on the Toro project site. Hearing protection. Hearing protection shall be worn by all personnel working in areas posted as requiring such protection, where directed by the project safety manager or where required by the work. Respiratory protection. Respiratory protection shall be worn by all personnel working in areas posted as requiring such protection, where directed by project safety manager or where required by the work. Fall arrest. 
Fall arrests shall be used in all work areas with an unguarded falling hazard of four feet or more. Examples of such areas within six feet of leading edge are open-sided scaffolds, open-sided floors, floor openings, roof openings, roof edges, skylight openings, steel erection, overhead ductwork, high conduit and wiring, painting of structures, cleaning of trusses, and pipe bridge work. Follow rust is also required working in scissor lifts and man lifts of any type. In addition, follow rust will be used in all work areas with an unguarded falling hazard at any height above dangerous conditions such as vertical protruding rebar, chemical pits, and high voltage electric wires. Falling Object Protection Where elevated work is in progress, signs, barricades, barrier tapes, and other warnings or entry restriction devices shall be installed to keep the area below clear of personnel. If work is required in the area below the elevated work area, it should be scheduled at a time separate from the elevated work. Where a lift is made over a work area, the area below the path of the lift shall be cleared of personnel during the lift and guarded to prevent persons from entering that area. Other protective gear. Other protective gear will be provided and used when required by the contractor, by the owner's rules, by law or regulation, when its use is indicated by prudent work safety practice or by the project safety manager. Construction tools and equipment rules. Training. All contractor personnel shall be properly trained in the use and operation of all contractor furnished tools, equipment, and supplies. Safety devices. Safety devices and guards on tools and equipment shall be functional and always used. Tools found to be missing safety guards will be deemed unsafe and removed from service. Grounding. Electrical tools and equipment shall be either grounded or double insulated. Ground fault interruption protection shall be used at all times. Cables and cords shall be maintained in safe condition. Condition. Construction tools and equipment shall be maintained in a safe operating condition. Riding. Riding on construction equipment, forklifts, or other vehicles shall not be permitted unless such vehicles are equipped with passenger seats. Work structures. Structures such as scaffolding, work platforms, ladders, stairways, handrails, and the like shall be constructed and maintained in strict compliance with the manufacturer's instructions and applicable laws, codes, and regulations. Ladder safety and maintenance. Daily visual inspection of all ladders is required. All ladders will be physically inspected and documented on a monthly basis. There are inspection forms for this. Each ladder will need to have a system of identification, number, name, etc. to correspond with the inspection form. These are completed by each contractor and subcontractor. Ladders will be marked with a colored tape system, same as electrical cords. Only fiberglass ladders are allowed on the job site. Remove any damaged ladder and place out of service immediately. Ladder inspection form. The following is an example of the ladder inspection form. These are required to be filled out monthly and must be turned into the project safety manager. Ladder inspection form. The following is a list of the color codes for the monthly inspections. Please use the appropriate color code for the month as it is inspected. Scaffold safety. All scaffolding shall be erected according to OSHA standards. All scaffolding will be erected under the supervision of a competent person. Cranes and rigging. Only certified, qualified persons may operate cranes. Cranes must be properly barricaded to prevent entry into the swing radius of the crane. Areas beneath low travel paths must be addressed prior to picks being made and entry into this area identified and prohibited. Cranes and rigging continued. Properly securing any load with appropriate rigging is crucial to any lifting being done by machinery on the job site. 
If the rigging fails, the result can cause serious injury or even death. Before any load is lifted, all components of the rigging hardware shall be evaluated by a qualified person. Lockout tagout applies to all types and sources of energy. Control the potential for the release of energy sources. This facility is a one employee, one lock. A tag or label showing the name of the employee must be attached to every personal lock. Training standard complies with OSHA 1910.147. Documentation of training is required. Locks need to be removed at the end of the shift. Abandoned lock procedure implemented if lock is not removed at the end of the shift. This requires abandoned lock form to be completed. Inspection performed of contractor's group lockout process and procedures. Confined space. Permit required confined spaces. Area large enough or so configured that a person can either put in any body part or into the space to perform work. Limited means of entry or exit. Space is not designed for continuous human occupancy. Hazardous atmosphere, engulfment, or any other serious hazard must be considered. Documented employee training for all, entrance, and attendance. Confined space continued. Project safety manager will issue all confined space permits. Permit must be returned when work is complete for that shift. Gas monitoring equipment requirements. Proof of calibration and calibrated prior to each use. Must provide continuous monitoring. A four gas meter monitor is required. Do not take compressed gas cylinders into confined spaces. Keep ventilation and fire watch in place, especially with hot work. Remove cutting torches from the space when not in use. Excavations. All excavations five feet or deeper will be protected by proper shoring or benching. Adequate physical barrier protection shall be in place at all unattended excavations. Considerations for confined space, hazardous atmosphere, exposure to falling objects, benching and sloping, exposure to traffic, adjacent structures, leading edge fall protection. Daily inspection is required. SDS MSDS sheets. SDS MSDS sheets are available to all employees at all times. Employees will be notified anytime there is a possibility of being exposed to any hazardous chemical. Be familiar with all chemicals or materials you are using. Any incident of overexposure or spill of a hazardous chemical or substance must be reported to the project safety manager. Hazardous material storage. The contractor shall ensure that storage of hazardous materials on the toil site shall meet the following minimum requirements. Storage locations and quantities shall be approved by the project safety manager. Hazardous materials shall be stored on solid bases. Solid bases shall include but not limited be limited to compacted earth, pallets, concrete, or asphalt platforms, or paving. Hazardous materials shall be stored, stacked, or secured to prevent toppling, spillage, or other unintended dislodgement. Hazardous materials containers shall be placed so that labels and legends can always be read by an observer standing in an aisle. Hazardous material storage. Compressed gas cylinders shall be stored and secured in the upright position at safe distances from or shielded from welding, and cutting operations. Compressed gas cylinders and storage shall be shut off and torches, hose, and manifolds removed and capped. Cylinders shall be periodically checked for leakage. Hazardous materials which if brought in contact with each other could react to pose an equal or greater hazard than either material stored alone. Shall be stored at not less than 20 feet apart. Alternatively, such hazardous materials shall be separated by an impervious barrier, the height of which shall be equal to or exceed the greatest storage height of the materials. Hazardous material storage. 
Warning signs shall be posted and maintained in a legible condition at all access points to hazardous material storage areas. Warning signs shall clearly define the specific hazardous nature of the stored materials. For example, corrosive, flammable, oxidizer, explosive, compressed gas, or other specific hazardous nature. The contractor shall inspect its and its subcontractors' hazardous material storage areas at least once daily. The contractor shall immediately correct hazardous materials storage deficiency. Hazardous material storage. Gasoline and diesel fuel are to be transported and stored in approved and appropriately labeled containers. Do not store fuel containers inside enclosed job trailers or buildings. A fuel storage cabinet will be used for storage of fuel cans. Fire protection. Comply with the owner's fire regulations, warning signals, and procedures. Coordinate work requiring interruptions of the owner's fire protection systems with the project safety manager prior to commencing such work. The contractor shall use the appropriate valve operating procedures whenever fire protection system valves must be opened or closed. Fire protection. Firefighting. You do not have an employment obligation to fight any structural fire. Firefighting, rescue, or medical duties will be performed by professionals. If the need arises and a fire extinguisher is utilized to fight a fire, use the pass, pull pin, aim at base, squeeze, and sweep side to side method. Cutting, welding, hot work permits. The contractor or subcontractor shall request cutting, welding, hot work permits prior to performing operations involving electric or gas welding, gas cutting or burning, or any other operation involving heating, open flames, sparks, or electric arcs with approval of project safety manager. Cutting, welding, hot work permits shall be valid for no longer than one work shift unless otherwise approved by the project safety manager. Cutting, welding, hot work permits may be issued on the owner's permit form or on any other permit forms approved by the safety manager. Cutting, welding, hot work permits shall be required in all job site areas except for those areas specifically approved by the project safety manager as welding, shop, or maintenance areas. Cutting, welding, hot work permits. Identify combustible materials, including paper and cardboard, in the work area. Combustible materials shall either be moved at least 35 feet away from the flame or arc or protected in place. Protect wall and floor openings to keep out sparks. Determine that flammable liquids and vapors are not present. Determine that hose systems, if any, are functional. If sprinkler and hose systems are not functional, the contractor shall obtain permission from the safety manager before proceeding with the work. Ensure adequate ventilation for welders by means of natural air movement, local exhaust ventilators, or airline respirators as required by local conditions. Cutting welding hot work permits. Establish a fire watch with fully loaded fire extinguishers of suitable type and or charged water hoses. Require the welder supervisor to sign a cutting welding hot work permit. Maintain a fire watch throughout the operation and for a minimum of 30 minutes following the completion of the operations. This shall be extended if the work area warrants longer. At the end of the 30 minute period, inspect the work area for sparks and flame. Additional fire watch may be required based on the nature and location of the hot work. Require the welder to sign the cutting welding hot work permit to certify safe completion of the operation. Submit the completed cutting weld hot work permit to the project safety manager. Daily procedures. Check in, check out, safety meetings, toolbox talks, task planning, safe plan of action, equipment inspections, permitting processes, hot work permit, roof access permit, confined space permit, excavation, concrete cutting and drilling permit, and various other permits as needed. 
barricades identified for your work area. Cutting, welding, hot work permit forms. The following is one example of a hot work permit. Project safety manager must approve other hot work permits. Roof access permit. The following permit must be used when working on a structural roof of any type on the project site. Confined space entry permit. The following permit must be used before entry into a confined space. Excavating, concrete cutting, and drilling permit. Prior to cutting concrete or excavating, the contractor or subcontractor shall plan, follow, and fill out the excavating, concrete cutting, and drilling permit. Determining if underground or embedded hazards are present prior to cutting or excavating is expected from the contractor or subcontractor. The following is an example of the excavating, concrete cutting, and drilling permit. Warning, signage, and barricade. Signs, barricades, barrier tapes, and other warning or entry restriction devices shall be provided wherever required by the work or when required by the project safety manager. The color or type of barricade used shall be based on the determined hazard. Barricades shall be tagged. Red, which equals danger, do not enter without authorization. Yellow is caution. Check areas for hazards prior to entry and proceed with caution. Disciplinary action. Any safety violation which may lead to serious injury or death will result in immediate removal from the site. Examples of this situation include, but are not limited to the following. Violation of fall protection greater than four feet. Violation of confined space entry policy. Violation of lockout, tagout, or lock tag try policy, crossing red barricade tape without authorization, operation of equipment in an unsafe manner. Disciplinary action. The violation of any of the safety rules stated above and in the health and safety manual will be caused for immediate disciplinary action up to and including discharge. Substance abuse testing. Pre-employment, post-accident, random drug testing will be utilized. Refusal of consent to taking tests will be grounds for removal from job site and termination of employment. Substance abuse testing. This site's substance abuse policy dictates mandatory substance abuse testing for any employee requiring medical treatment in a medical facility for job-related injury or illness. Substance abuse testing will be required as outlined in the Safety and Health Manual. A positive test result will result in immediate termination of employment from this job site. Definitions to specific wordage can be found in the Safety and Health Manual. Proficiency test. This test of 25 multiple choice questions will determine your knowledge of basic health and safety. You may now begin your test.